Hello and welcome to this next instalment of Asset Optimization's RBI video log. My name's Paul Rafeby. I've been in maintenance, reliability and asset integrity for over 25 years now. I'm API 580 certified and I've been implementing risk-based inspection worldwide. In this short video, we're going to talk about equipment and process data collection. If you've missed any of our previous videos in our RBI video log, please head to our website or our YouTube channel. Data collection can take over 50% of the total effort in any RBI implementation project, depending on the methodology that's being used. Two uses of this data, or two customers of this data, are firstly, the corrosion engineer, who was part of the damage mechanism review, who uses data to determine what damage mechanisms are affecting the equipment in the covered processes. Secondly, the risk analyst will use this data to perform calculations on probability of failure and consequence of failure. A further use for this data could be used in the inspection planning stage of the RBI project, where specific elements of the equipment data can be used to determine the most effective inspection plan. The quality and quantity of the RBI data depends on the methodology that you're using. The more detailed the methodology or quantitative the methodology, the greater the data requirement. Regardless of the RBI type, it is very important that your sources of your data are reliable and where any discrepancies are found that these are resolved and locked. Also if you have to make any assumptions then these assumptions are validated. This is specified in API 580 section 7.3 and is very important. Typical sources of equipment data include equipment specifications, U1 forms, design drawings, design calculations, piping specifications and equipment data sheets. Typical sources of process data include heat and mass balance, process documentation such as PNIDs, PFDs, HAZOPs and PHAs, as well as design specifications. You can also use uh, process historians like OSI Pi. It's common practice to rank the sources in terms of which is the most reliable. And this means that anybody who's collecting this data, should the data be missing from the most reliable source, they can then move on to the next most reliable source and therefore be able to complete the data collection activity. The typical equipment data depends on the asset type being analysed during the risk assessment. This could be pressure vessels, tanks, piping, columns or heaters. Also, the risk model may require specific asset data. Typical equipment data includes design codes, materials of construction, the commissioning date, physical dimensions, whether any post-world heat treatment was used, if the equipment is insulated and what type of insulation has been used. Equipment data is typically collected by the inspection specialist, such as an inspector or an engineer. Common process data includes the fluid, any contamination contained within the fluid, the phase, the startup and shutdown considerations, is it in cyclic service or does it operate intermittently? Is there any issue around shutting down or starting up? And any known excursions beyond the safe operating limits? Process data is typically collected by the unit process engineer or process specialist. It's important to cross-check the data with that data that's collected during field verification and any discrepancies found to be resolved. We talked about field verification on a previous video. If you'd like more information on the topic covered today or help with your asset integrity program, then feel free to contact us via the website or directly through email. We'd be happy to help.